Ahoy and welcome to this narrowboat adventure. So today I'm going to be doing my very best to explain to you how a lock works. So a lock raises or lowers a boat at the point at which the water level changes on the canal. So that's usually when we're going up or downhill. So I'm going to start by explaining to you some of the components of a lock and then I'm going to go on to explaining how that would work when you are moving your boat from one side of a lock to the other. So we call the side of the lock with the least water the downstream side of the lock and the side of the lock with the most water the upstream side of the lock. So on a lock we have a thing called a paddle. A paddle is a guillotine mechanism that's underneath the water. You open and close the paddle using your windlass on the gate. The water flows from upstream to downstream so that would be emptying the lock if it is a full lock and you're opening the downstream sluices or filling the lock if it is an empty lock and you're opening the upstream sluices. The sluices would be opening the paddles. It's just another word for the same thing. On a lock the gates are the two pieces of wood that join. There's long black pieces of wood or metal with white painted on the end. Um, so when they're open it's for letting boats in or out of the lock and when they're closed that's when you can change the level at which the water is. So whether you want your boat to rise so you can go out uphill or lower so you can go uh, out downhill. They're usually about 72 feet long and they are usually 14 foot wide but you can get some that are 7 foot wide. So 14 foot wide would accommodate two narrow boats or a wide beam and a 7 foot wide would accommodate just one narrow boat. When you want to open a gate you put your back against the white part of the gate and you push with your weight and usually when the water level is right it shouldn't be too difficult um, and so then you push with your legs and there are some small footholds uh, on the ground to make it easier so you don't slip when pushing the gate. In the middle of a lock there's a ladder um, that's there so that if you're doing the lock on your own, when you finish doing the gates and the gates are open and you need to drive your boat out of the lock, you can walk down the ladder to get back onto your boat or you can walk up it, obviously, to get off your boat once you come into an empty lock. On each side of a lock, there is a lock landing, which is a space with some bollards painted white, which is where boats wait if they're waiting to go into a lock or if they are leaving their boat there to open a lock to let themselves in. Underneath the water, inside the top gate, there is something called the sill, and you'll always see painted on the floor the sill marker. The sill is a ledge underneath the water where the levels change. So that will be inside the top gate, and it's very important to keep your boat clear of the sill, as if your boat gets caught on the sill, it can push the front end of your boat under the water, and that often will cause the boat to take on water and possibly sink. It's also really important to keep your boat, cl boat clear of both of the gates, as some gates have cavities, some of them will have bolts poking out, and those things can damage your boat. And again, if your boat get, gets caught in the gate, it can cause it to take on water and sink. So now I'm going to talk about what we do when we are using a lock as a boater. So you arrive at a lock and you'll put your boat in the lock landing if the gates are shut. So for this example, I'm going to say we're going downhill and we've arrived and the lock is empty. So we're going to have to fill the lock before we can put our boat into it. So we take our windlass, we go to the lock and we're going to first of all open the ground paddles and we're going to let the water in through the ground and once it gets up to the level of the sill, we're going to start opening the gate paddles. The water then should quite quickly fill up the lock so that the level in the lock is the same as the level on the uphill side of the canal. You should then find it easy to open the gates 
and drive your boat inside. As we're going downhill I want to mention that it's important not to tie a knot on your boat uh, just because if you're going downhill then the knot can get locked quite tightly and be very difficult to undo which can also be quite dangerous to your boat. Once you've got your boat secured you're going to close the gates and close the paddles on the upstream side of the canal. Then you're going to head to the downstream gates You're going to start off by opening the paddles about halfway and then seeing how strong the water is. If you think that it's not too strong, you can open them the whole way. Uh, it's really up to you. And then when the lock has emptied and the water is the same level as downstream, you should find the gates open quite easily. Take your boat out, pop it on the lock landing go back, close the gates and close the paddles so it's ready for the next boaters. If you're going upstream, pretty much the exact same thing you would do, aside from you would, I would recommend opening the paddle on the side that your boat is on first so that the water pushes against the opposite side of the lock, bounces back and pushes your boat flush against the side that it's on. And again, I would say when you're going upstream, it's more important to slowly open the paddles so that you can get a gauge on how fast the water is going to be coming downstream. I think I've covered everything. I hope I've covered everything. Um, it's really important to take care on a lock. They can be quite dangerous. Please always hold the handrail if you're walking over the top of a lock. I don't really feel like I need to give you a safety briefing in my video about how they work. This hopefully will give you an understanding of what's going on underneath the waterline. Um, and if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. If there's a really good comment about how locks work, I will pin it to the top so you can see it for yourself. If you'd like to join me again on this narrowboat adventure, please click subscribe. It means a lot to me. I'm getting really close to 10,000 subscribers, which would mean a lot to get to that milestone. And if you would like to, you can pop on over to Facebook. I also post the videos up there, as I know sometimes there can be issues with the subscribers um, feed on YouTube. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. I really hope I helped you understand locks. Bye! <laughs>